What's going on? It's Anand back again and today I'm back with Ranbir who is the owner of San Jose Barbell and in this video we're going to show you three ways how you can market your online fitness business. You can't be a good online coach if you're not coaching people. If you haven't coached people in real life, you can't coach people online. In case you didn't know, Ranbir is the owner of San Jose Barbell, but he also has a successful online coaching business. So today he's going to share with us the top three things that you can do today to grow your online fitness business even faster. Yeah, so, um, and you know, we, we started off as just having the gym and then uh, we, which you, so, you know, we had a good social media presence, which, you know, you'll get into for number two, but uh, people would ask us a lot of questions, you know, uh, and so that's how we kind of just accidentally got into, you know, having our online side of the business. Mm -hmm. But the first thing is that you got to have a good product. Mm -hmm. Like if your service is not good, then you're marketing garbage and eventually people are going to find out yeah. and you're going to like, it's like if you have holes in your boat, you're gonna sink no matter you keep putting water in it's just going out right yeah. uh, or holes in your bucket um, yeah. like you're you're putting water into the bucket but all the water is going out so yeah. um, what does that mean like to keep it super simple it's like know your material so what we do is we help people make fat loss super enjoyable and easy like that's what we do and we help people get really strong in a very easy, simple way. In order for me to do that, I got to know all of that stuff. So I have to know about nutrition. I have to know about training. Um, I have to know about recovery. I got to know about the mental side of that because that's the biggest part of it. Right. It's like I got to know what's going on in somebody's head and how to communicate for that to that person. So. I always have this opinion of like, you can't be a good online coach if you're not coaching people. If you haven't coached people in real life, uh, you can't coach people online. Um, and I've had some thoughts about this. One of them is like, as far as training goes, I think that's 100% true. Like you just, you can't, you can't train somebody if you haven't worked with people hands on. Right. Because you don't know what to look for. Right. Right. With nutrition, I think you can do that mm -hmm. because it's not the same. It's not like oh, I'm watching you and your deadlift technique and seeing where your hands are, where where you at. Like, yeah. and I think with nutrition, it's it's a conversation. So being good at helping people with their nutrition mm -hmm. can be done online, but you still need to, that prerequisite of like you got to know how nutrition works. Mm -hmm. So being good is first. I, that That's my number one recommendation is like be really good right. at what you do. And just so for some resources, um, you know, as far as training and nutrition go, uh, for somebody who wants to, you know, market and be better uh, at their business is uh, for, for training, I would, you know, look at, there's so much information out there, but the foundations of a lot of the stuff that we teach can be found in Dan John's work. Mm -hmm. um, I love stuff that Max Shank puts out. Um, who else? There's so many names come to mind. Uh, Pavel. So, you know, those are, that's like a very small list. There's a lot of the people, but like, if you're getting started, go to those places because these these people simplify everything mm -hmm. and they help you figure out what truly matters and what doesn't mm -hmm. us as well if you want to follow us because that's what we do we go through all of this variety of information yeah. and filter out what truly matters and is beneficial right. um, uh, and you know for nutrition I'll say you know stuff from um, if you're getting technical, like, you know, Ly uh, Lyle McDonald, yeah. uh, Aragon, all those stuff, all those people. But then again, still like Dan John, Pavel, Max Shank, these types of people, 
they're still simplifying nutrition as well. And so you're gonna want to know how that stuff works. Even if you're not talking complexities with a client, you need to know how it works. Right. Third piece, is, and this is I think the most important, is the communication part. And what I would recommend somebody who wants to learn about how to communicate well is I would read motivational interviewing. Mm. Uh, motivational interviewing uh, has a specific book for fitness professionals or health professionals. Um, basically, it's how to prepare people for change. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that could be a whole topic in and of itself, like mm-hmm. that whole book. And I, it's really weird to me that a lot more people aren't talking about it because mm-hmm. it's probably the most powerful tool that we use. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes everything better versus me just yelling at people, track your calories. Like, am, am I, as for short, uh, teaches you how to get that person to actually do that mm-hmm. without you just telling them do this, do this, do this, mm-hmm. right? Wow. So those that would be number one. Um, the second thing is, you know, your social media mm-hmm. uh, presence. So you have some stuff that... Yeah, definitely. So I would say in terms of social media, there's like so many platforms you can choose from, right? Uh, I mean, for fitness, probably the biggest ones are YouTube and Instagram. But then there's also people who post content on blogs. They, you know, they might have... Uh, they might use Snapchat, uh, they might um, have a podcast. So ideally what you want to do is um, have something called a PMP, which is personal media platform. And which is you want to focus on any one platform force that you think that you can be the best at in terms of your content. Like not everyone is good on video, not everyone is good at recording podcasts. But ideally, you know, pick something If I was to make a recommendation, my recommendation is video is the most powerful, especially when it comes to fitness, because you can show people. Like, you know, you can have a great podcast and teach people, but then at the end of the day, fitness is so visual, like people want to see how to do stuff. And they're also inspired by the results. So people look up to people who are already in good shape. So if you are in good shape, then it's going to be very easy for you to market your business. And that's why the biggest names in fitness are all on YouTube. So that would be my recommendation, but it might not be for you. You know, it may be, uh, I know you do podcasting and podcasting is so easy these days. You know, you can download an app called Anchor on your yep. phone and just, just start talking about all these fitness topics. And I'll let you talk more about well, it. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, like, like, I literally need... I just need this and I can have my podcast up mm-hmm. like we press record mm-hmm. and uh, actually I probably should have been doing that right now but yeah. these would have been podcast episodes but super simple like I record it and I press uh, upload and then it goes to all the platforms so Anchor is a great tool to do that um, but uh, yeah like I think it's important to like you said find which one feels the best for you Mm -hmm. and focus on that because it can be overwhelming to be like oh i gotta be on instagram i gotta be on youtube i gotta write my blog i gotta have a podcast you don't have to do all that no focus the focus on one yeah and you also need to focus on where your audience is right like let's say you you're targeting like older people like uh, one of my friends has a youtube channel called boomer fitness which focuses on baby boomers but he's on youtube because his viewers are on youtube but they those older people might not be using Instagram or Snapchat, right? Or TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> so it depends on where your audience is as well. So, you know, you got to find a fine balance between your strengths or what platform you're comfortable with, but also where your audience is. And yeah. then you got to find that balance. And once you have like a primary media platform, then you can, you know, either repurpose that content onto other platforms. But the reason why I'm so strong on just having a media platform is that your content through your media platform is gonna help show people what you're about. You know, you're gonna be able to share your experiences, your knowledge, your philosophy on on training. And essentially you're coaching people on fitness even without being their coach. So you almost like people are already looking up to you for advice and as a coach. Yeah. And then ultimately when they're ready, they, they're, and when they're ready to set, uh, get started with you in terms of being your client, yeah. it's gonna be very easy versus, you know, just randomly 
finding someone through a Facebook ad and they've never even seen your content. No connection or There's no connection, right? So your conversion is going to be very lower. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think you, the going to where the audience is is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, I just remember like it's like if I'm looking for platypus and I'm in Africa, I'm like, man, I can't find any platypus. Where's the platypus? Mm-hmm. You're not going to find it because they don't live there. Mm-hmm. Right? So I think that is very important. So like somebody who's knows like they're working with baby boomers i'm not gonna find them if i'm over there on you know TikTok. yeah uh because they don't live there yeah you know um so having and it's not a lot of work i mean it's just sitting down and asking that question and thinking about it i mean and if you have clients already just have a conversation this is why i love like one of the things that i really enjoy is like having conversations with my clients and like grabbing a cup of coffee or whatever if you have the benefit of actually, you know, meeting some of them, because I know, you know, obviously if you're online, your people are all over the place. But you know, ask them like, hey, what do you, what do you do? Like, where do you, ha- where do you spend your time? Mm. You know. Um, so rather than trying to guess, go straight to the source. Yeah. You know, kind of like what you're saying is like building that relationship is for your social media. Don't focus on an outcome. Mm. Focus on doing your best of giving value. So like, for example, on that, on our first thing, which is like, we said, hey, be good at your craft, training, nutrition, strength, blah, blah, blah. That's, I can give you the theory, but I was trying to think, how can I be more helpful to that person? Right, and so I can be more helpful by giving them a specific thing to do or to look at, or you know, in in this case, like you're talking about, okay, I'm on video, I can show them mm-hmm. how to do this exercise, what's important, what's not, give them practical tips um, rather than just theory or talking about it. I might, you know, share with them where do I get my X, Y, or Z. Mm-hmm. You can get it there too. Yeah. Um, or in the case of the chicken, right? Like we were talking earlier or before about go eat chicken for your protein. Yeah. That's one thing, but it's completely different if in my social media I show you exactly how I'm doing it yeah. and how easy it is. And maybe I uh, upload something for you to download that's like a simple sheet that you know it makes it super easy for you. So that's me giving more value to my relationship with these people instead of just being like for protein eat chicken like okay like that's i get it but that's not as helpful if i give you like hey here's like a five minute recipe that tastes fucking amazing yeah here's exactly what you need to do yeah right so that that's i think is very important in social media is like give them exact the most helpful thing that you can versus just theory be, yeah yeah pretty much like uh, you know people are sometimes they withhold information they're like i don't want to reveal everything on social media like all my secrets yeah as if there's any secrets out there uh no that's very interesting and, and if you guys uh, are interested in learning more about how to grow your social media or your youtube channel then leave a comment down below because if if there's enough interest i'll actually make a video or multiple videos on this and we go very deep into these topics but uh yeah that's a really good point yeah the third one is following up i'll just say follow up number one but following up with conversations Mm -hmm. so every conversation is an opportunity for you to have a new client to create new business sources like there's so many things so like follow up with conversations somebody messages or comments on your video on youtube like hey thanks for commenting like blah 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 like do you have any other questions like simply by engaging in that you don't know what might come of that conversation Mm -hmm. um and it's in the interest it's in the best interest of the person anyway Mm -hmm. you know um because if you're if you're following number one and number two and you're trying to do you know and you're trying to make it about the person on the other side of the camera or the screen or the podcast whatever then you know follow up on these conversations and then the the big one for this and i think a lot of people ignore this 
because they're so distracted by I need to do Facebook ads, I need to have my funnel, I need to have this, blah, 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 is people are reaching out to you all the time. You need to like have conversations with them. Don't dismiss um, somebody, maybe somebody emails you a question. Maybe somebody at a party asks you a question. Maybe somebody DMs you and asks you a question and you dismiss it because you're like, oh, that's a silly question, like whatever. Like, you need to follow up with those people. That doesn't mean you're trying to sell them something, but see what they need and what they want and see if you can give it to them. Mm -hmm. If you can, great. You just got another client. You didn't need to spend money on advertising to get them. Right. If not, great. You just helped them and, like, it, you didn't lose anything. Yeah. You know? Plus, you built number two which is your relationship right yeah um uh, so and your reputation so right. i think follow-up is super super important um right. something that you know we used to suck at big yeah. time and then you know god knows how much money we left because we just wouldn't follow up yeah you know because we were so distracted like well, we need to do our our you know our website and our facebook and our this well, you just had five people who emailed you last week. You didn't email them back. Yeah. Or you waited too long. That's not good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, like, care about these people. Yeah. And, yeah, I would say that those are some really solid points. And I, I think the order in which you should focus on these points is, is actually the order we mentioned. First of all, you need to be a good coach. Understand your clients. Improve your skills as a coach. You know, learn everything there is. And then once you have that, demonstrate your coaching knowledge out there. You know, just put out content and coach people through your content. And then through your content, you're going to be able to start these conversations and then just follow up with those people. You know, try to understand what their problems are and see how you can help them. A lot of these people who engage with your content are going to be, become your customers. Not everyone is, you know, not everyone is ready, but the people who are ready to become your clients or your customers, uh, you're gonna be able to get them, but you need to follow up with them. You know, they, they aren't gonna come uh, to you and, hey, I, I wanna sign up for your coaching. People don't even know, in most cases, you know, what yeah. kind of services you offer, right? Yeah. And if you know for a fact that you can help these people, uh, then it, it's almost your obligation yeah. to follow up with them. That, hey, you know, what happened to this? You know, last week you were asking me about, I wanna lose 10 pounds. How are you doing with that? Yeah, you know those are like very. Um, these are these are things that people don't talk about. Yeah, you know, in in terms of fitness, online fitness marketing, people will tell you all those things about how to grow your Instagram and how to run Facebook ads, how to run make these funnels and websites. Whereas you know none of that matters if you don't have these three things in place. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you do you did a really good job of simplifying all that and. I can just think back through the last eight years or whatever of our journey and I'm like man if we and we've gone we've had you know like this is the other thing about social media is like you think something and you don't know what the reality is mm -hmm. um, and you just assume it's like we've had our struggles right and like it's been moments of like why am I even doing this but a lot of those issues are caused by not like just forgetting like, oh, hey, the, the, the answers to everything are right here in these three things that Anand just summarized. Meanwhile, I'm looking at everything, but I refuse to look at this. Mm -hmm. And so you just, you just keep your struggle alive by doing that. Your struggle could, could you could end your struggle mm -hmm. in a month's time by doing, like legitimately. Yeah. Like you could take any business and make it successful in a month's time by just doing this, yeah. you know? And imagine what happens if you do that for two months, 12 months, right? Um, but yeah, so on that line of simplicity, the one last thing uh, that came to my mind as you were saying that was, I wanted to give you something practical for number three, because as some, speaking, from my point of view, I'm a person who overcomplicates everything. Mm. And I'm like, oh, um, CRM, like I need, uh, like man, I can't even tell you 
I'd love to have like a list of all the services and programs I've downloaded for CRM and how much money I've spent and how much money they've generated in return. Yeah. Versus, you could remove all that, get yourself a spreadsheet. Yeah. Put name, date, note, yeah. status. Keep your goddamn spreadsheet and that's all. Con- phone number, email, yeah. that's all you need. And so like, I wanna really like emphasize that is like, there's nothing more powerful than clarity and simplicity. Here's your clarity and here's your spreadsheet is your simplicity, yeah. like, that's it. And it's just like fitness, you know, which is yeah. gonna be our next video, but we're gonna talk, go more into detail about how to apply this fitness mindset into having a successful business. So if you don't want to miss that video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But anyway, Ranbir, I want to thank you again for these amazing insights that you've given us. And we'll be making a lot more videos like these. So make sure to subscribe for that. But before you go, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know your biggest takeaway from this video and what's the next step or the next action step that you're going to implement in your business. So with that, I'll see you next time.